morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, most of you know, again, Pastor Felicia has asked me to uh, do a little video for you guys for the church service. Uh, she's going to be going to a funeral in Alabama, I believe. So she's going to be gone for about a week or so. And I guess she's going to do the in the field services when she comes back. But for that week, they've got me filling in here. Due to my schedule, I'm not going to be able to come up and uh, do it in the field. So I agreed to do another video for you guys. So, hope you all are doing well. Hope you're staying safe. And, okay. So, we're going to start right off here with a little song on the guitar like we did last time. There again, I'm not that, that experienced with it yet, so bear with me as I uh, try to serenade you guys. And most of you probably know this. It's a little bit of an oldie, but most of you probably know it. And sing along if you do. Oh, I got some nice color coordination going on here, white and blue. How about that, huh? That's, that's appropriate since last week was uh, Memorial Day. It was for me. I don't know when when past release is going to release this to you guys, but this is actually Wednesday? Yeah. Yeah, Wednesday. So, anyway, it was just Memorial Day for me, so that's, that's pretty classy. Alright guys, we're going to get right into it here. Bear with me, do the best I can do, and we'll see how it goes. You know how it is. Alright, <clears throat> this is called uh, I'd Rather Have Jesus. It was originally sang by a man named Jim Reeves, you, you, most of you probably know who Jim Reeves is. So, here we go, hopefully I can do us some justice. I'd rather have Jesus than any... Whoops. <laughs> I'm on the wrong line. Hang on here. Hang on. We'll get her going. Here we go. I'd rather
holy but a goody. All right, now if we could uh, take a moment and pray. Lord, we come to you. We thank you. We praise you for all that you do, God. We just pray today that you would be with us. You'd be with us in all the situations in the world. And that you would use these situations to bring people to you, God, in the way that only you can. And we pray that you would be with the leaders, world leaders and things at this time, the president. That you would lead him and guide him and how you'd like him to handle these situations. And help him to receive the support he needs as he does his job, Lord. We just pray for our churches, God, that they would be able to hold steadfast in these times. And we pray that we'd all be able to get together and worship together soon. Lord, we just thank you for all the little things, Lord, that you do. In these times, in these quiet times in life, Lord, we realize the simple things in life, Lord, and just how much they mean. We pray that you'd be with us as we go into this message, God, that you've given me. We pray that you would help me to deliver it the way you'd want delivered. And that you would open the ears and the hearts of the people to receive this message, Lord. We just pray this in your name. Amen. So I have to grab my notes. I forgot to lay them out. Not, uh, it's not notes so much as it is, uh, well, you'll see. Okay, so today we're going to be in Ezekiel chapter 37. So, while you're, while you're turning there, let me just give you a little bit of a, a little bit of a backstory here. Uh, when I found out I was going to be doing this, I always take time. I don't, I don't choose what I what I preach on. I wait and I let God lead me in what I'm preaching on. And I let Him choose. So, I was trying to find something over the weekend. And I wasn't coming up with anything. And I was praying about it and I wasn't coming up with anything. And then last night I said, well, Lord, you know tomorrow's my day to do it. So what do you... What do you have? And he gave me Ezekiel chapter 37. And I was like, I can't be right. I read it. I thought that, that can't be right. So I went through my Bible and looked for something else. There was nothing else. Something in my heart said, you, you, Ezekiel 37 is, is where he's supposed to be. So I go back and I read it. I was like, well, this is fine, but I don't know where you want me to go with it. So then I'd say, well, geez, that can't be it. And I'd go through my Bible again, and there still wouldn't be anything. So I'd come back to Ezekiel chapter 37. So then I took out all my commentaries that... Uncle Peter had given me, and I looked up a chapter. I read everything there was to read in every commentary, and I still didn't have what I needed. So, in the end, I did quite a bit of research, and I found out what I was supposed to do. You might notice I'm kind of offbeat here in this video. Uh, this is weighing on me really heavy. I've never had a message so important, I feel. This is direct from God. I didn't do anything here. This is completely, it's over my head. I don't know. But I feel a deep stirring in my soul over this. I can't explain it. 
I'm emotional. I feel like I could start crying. I don't know. This is going to be a message that's going to come hard for me. It's going to be one that's going to be hard to hear for you. And I just pray that you will open your hearts and minds to it. Because for some of you this may be the only chance or the last chance to hear something that you need to hear. So we're going to do it. I don't know how it's going to go. Like I say, this is just, it's so serious and weighing on me and I, I it's I gotta get it out so I feel frazzled to say the least um, I feel so stirred you know so we're gonna try to do this I don't know I don't know how it's gonna go honestly I just feel deeply moved and, and stirred So, we're going to start off, we're going to talk a little bit about Ezekiel, the prophet, before we read here. Now, Ezekiel, of course, is one of the more popular, I don't want to say popular, more uh, well-known prophets in the Bible. And his ministry was, he, he was a priest first, and then he became a prophet. And he was, would have been, let's see here, he was kind of in the time period of the destruction of Jerusalem. Okay. So, at the age of 30, he was called into service as a prophet. Roughly six years before the destruction of Jerusalem. So, he prophesied for about 16 years after Jerusalem was destroyed. So right around 22 years was his ministry. And he only lived to be, from what they can figure, about 50 years old. So his years were deeply invested in ministry, to say the least. Um, his message was the warning of the destruction of Jerusalem. And then after, it was a, a take heart message after, you know, Israel turned their hearts back to God. They had a really rough stretch there. And there was a lot of idol worshipping and things going on. And anyway, that led to the destruction of Jerusalem, ultimately. Um, after that time period, of course, as Israel always does, they turned back to God. And they were on fire for him. Um, and that's when Ezekiel's message turned to, you know, have faith, Israel will be restored, things like that. So, he was, as they say, a watchman for God, you know, getting out there, watching what's going on, bringing his messages to the people. So, it's a little bit of background on Ezekiel. His prophecies clearly indicate that these uh, sinful ways and immoral values and things that we see all around us in the world today lead to ultimate destruction. That's, that's what's going to bring us all the way down. Okay? Especially in this country. Let me just say that right now. Some of you don't want to hear that, but that's true. Okay? In the end, this country is going to go down because of the things that we've promoted and the way that we've turned our backs on God. Okay? That's what's going to happen. As with all of the prophets, Ezekiel's message was a twofold message. First part, this is from an article I read, by the way, right here first part is a warning that if the people persist in their unfaithfulness and rejection of the laws of God, they will suffer imaginable consequences. second part declares when they finally come to their senses and humbly cry out to God in genuine repentance, 
they will be recipients of God's choicest blessings. Okay, that's like what I was telling you about how Israel, uh, Jerusalem was destroyed and beforehand his message was, you know, turn back to God or whatever. And then after, it was, uh, it was a have faith and you will be restored. I believe that have quite a few notes here. Yeah, okay. That is that's it for the background on Ezekiel. Now let's go ahead and read here in uh, chapter 37 here. The Valley of Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord. It set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. Now, before we go any further, I want to say this word breath here can mean wind, but it also primarily can mean spirit. I will make spirit, or my spirit, enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying there was a voice, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and the tendons and flesh appeared on them, and skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, Prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Come, breathe from the four winds, breathe into these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breathed, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say our bones are dried up and our hope is gone, we are cut off. Therefore prophesy and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open up your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open up your graves and bring you back from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. So, this is a message of hope for Israel. And this would be after the destruction of Jerusalem, of course. And these people are depressed, they're broken. And God says to them, fear not, I will breathe my spirit into you and make you new again and bring you back to the land of Israel. Okay? I'll restore you as a nation. As we know, prophecies have usually, most of them, two meanings. Meaning for them, meaning for Day. As they always say, history repeats itself. 
So, what I wanted to say is, um, not what I wanted to say. What I was told to say is this. Right now, we are in the Valley of Dry Bones. Okay. This country is a valley of dry bones. Everything you see going on around you is brought on by the fact that we are so out of touch with God. We've gone so far away and we're, we're broken nation. We already knew that. But time's up. Okay. Time is up. This Corona, this COVID-19, okay, this is just the beginning. Now, people have been saying this for years, that we're in Revelation. This time, I'm telling you, people believe it. This is it. Okay? This is it. It's only going to get worse. So you might as well just settle into it. I don't know how long this all is going to last before it finally boils into the, you know, the final shebang. I, I, I have no idea. But I'm telling you, it's only going to get worse. This country will never be the same again. And I'm not talking about because we have this coronavirus. This coronavirus is a plague. Okay? Just like Egypt had plagues. Because they were out of touch with God. This is a plague. This plague is to bring people to their knees. But, this plague is being used, okay, God's allowing this plague to be used for more than that, more than just, you know, uh, people being distraught and people dying and, you know, people panicking. We have a serious problem. We're spiritually dead. Okay, ninety percent of the churches are spiritually dead or complete sellouts. I'm saying this, okay? I'm sick and tired of sitting on the sidelines. All right, it's time for somebody to buck up and say what needs to be said. And nobody out there is saying it. Everybody's gone wishy-washy, bunch of spineless jellyfish off to the sidelines, while the world's falling apart. Somebody needs to say this. So, what we have here is we have a situation where the world is spiritually dead. Okay? Our country, here's the difference. The world is spiritually dead, but our country proclaimed to be a godly nation. And they have gone so far from that, it has been a complete slap to the face of God. It has been a complete slap to the face of God of real Christians, okay? And it's presented a bad example to everyone out there, okay? We're supposed to be being in this country that's God-founded, that's light to other nations. We can't even pull up our bootstraps, okay? This is a serious issue. Very serious issue. At this point, we've completely ruined the witness, okay? This country has completely dumped the witness of, of Christianity and all that down the tubes. Because now people associate that with compromise and all these other things, okay? 
churches are selling out a dime a dozen to whatever's popular, whatever's good, whatever's cool, okay? I'm sick and tired of listening to how we just need to get more hip and more, you know. It, no, okay? No. Let me tell you something, people out there, okay? Your churches are selling out. They're selling out like crazy, and they're selling out because they want the youth in there. Let me tell you something. These churches are completely dumping their morals down the tubes. They're going for whatever's easy and whatever brings the people in. And the young people are so lost today, and they can't even get the help they need at the churches because the churches are going along with whatever's good and whatever brings in the youth. And they ain't even preaching the word of God that needs to be preached to these people. Okay? Serious issues. These serious issues are deeper than the surface. The core of this country is completely dark. Okay? This country is done. If we don't turn back to God, I think time's up. That's what I think. Here's the deal. Okay? Churches, the vast majority of churches can no longer be depended on to bring the gospel, the true gospel, to the people who need it. So just get that right out of your head. It's up to you, and it's up to me, to make sure people hear the message they need to hear. Because the body of Christ is one hurting unit right now. And people are just selling out like crazy. And they can't be depended on. Okay, They're after saving their own skin and that's it. So we need to unite you, average Joe, in your community. You need to get out there and you need to start ministering to people. Because your churches can't be depended on to do it. Time is running out. And it's time to kick it in gear and get people saved. Okay? That's it. This valley of dry bones has been getting deader and drier as the years go by. You don't believe it? Look at history. Okay? History keeps getting worse all the time. The only difference is, every once in a great while, okay, there will be a revival in the course of history that will bring people back to God and will ultimately save them, okay? Just like Jonah and Nineveh, okay? It's the same idea, same thing. At this point, I don't think there's any time for a revival to save the nation. Okay? This nation isn't going to get saved. I mean that. Not. As in their souls won't get saved. But I mean the nation I don't believe is going to get spared. At this point. Okay? But. There's always, always more souls to be saved. We don't have a lot of time. The time to sit back, kick your feet up and say, well, my pastor and my church will take care of it. No. 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 90% of you, your pastor can't even be depended on to believe the true word of God. Take it from somebody who knows. Okay? I've been around, I've been in different churches, I've seen the type of people that these colleges are turning out. I'm telling you, you cannot depend on these people to get the job done. 90% of them, alright? You can't depend on them. It's time for you to get up off your couch and go out there and start finding people and start telling them about Jesus. This country's gone down the tube. Okay? They just have. Think about 
the promise here to Israel and Ezekiel to become a nation again. After this whole deal, okay, they didn't become a nation again until the 1940s, late 1940s after World War II, 48, I believe. Okay, we don't have that kind of time. We don't. Time is up. Plugs being pulled. Okay. We are having one last golden age. Well, we've had one last golden age. President Trump. He came in. He stirred people up. He's got a lot of good things done. The economy was booming. Things were good. It was the pride before the fall, the security before the end. At this point, everything's crashing down. The economy's flat. Okay. And this coronavirus, yes, this is, as I said before, a plague, I believe, on the nation. Okay. I don't care what your political view is. I don't care. Okay, I'm going to tell you how it is. The Democrats are using this as a way to shut down the country and take it over. We're going to become communism. You ain't going to be able to go anywhere that the government doesn't know about and didn't tell you you can go. And the mark of the beast is on its way. Trump gets elected a second round, which I'm not saying either way. It could go either way. I don't know that. But even if he did, who do you think is going to come in after him? Hmm? They already rigged the first election, okay, so that they could get him out of there and they could get somebody in there who they wanted, the Democrats. Somebody who could finish Obama's job. He ran out of time to finish. Don't you think they're going to let it happen? Okay. If Trump gets elected this next term, he ain't going to be able to. Obviously, he's going to be. His time's going to be up. It's going to be time for somebody else anyway. But they ain't going to let somebody else get in there after Trump. That's actually going to do the right thing. Okay. This country's done. It's toast. Communism's on its way. Mark Beast is on its way. We're going to be living like Germany. Okay? It's the way it is. We have a very minimal amount of time. Very small. Small on that. Probably more like that. Okay? To get out there and do everything we can to get the souls saved. Alright? Every last one, I don't care who you are, every last one of you has a responsibility to get these people saved. It's no longer your pastor's job. Not that it ever was fully, anyway. A lot of you used your pastor and your church to shirk your responsibilities. Well, I don't have to because my pastor and my church are out there saving the soul. I, it doesn't depend on me. I can just live a normal life. A lot of you said, I can, I can live a normal life and make a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of good that did. Okay. Whoever you are, there's no such thing as too old. There's no such thing as too young. You get out there and you start getting people saved. Whatever way possible. And not by compromise. Okay. Because this country's been destroyed. Because of people's compromise, people's cop-outs, people's excuses. This is the end. This is not the close of the chapter, this is the close of the book. So you better make sure you're right with God. And 
you better make sure every person in your life you come in contact with, you do everything in your power to make sure that they are right with God when the time comes. It's time to stand up. It's time to take action. Alright? It is. Because time's running short. We're short-staffed. And we're under the gun. So it's time to get out there and get done what needs to be done. That's the time we have left. And not put the responsibility on anybody else. Because it's your responsibility. And it's my responsibility. At this point. You can see how far everything has fallen. Okay. In my lifetime I think back. To when I was little. I think how things were. And I think of things now. And it shocks me to see just how far things have gone in my life. And I've only been kicking around here for 17 years. Okay? Some of you have been kicking around here 80 plus. And you've seen a lot more than I have. So you know what I'm talking about. If you look, it's all been going downhill since beginning of the time. But if you look just since the 1960s to now, the radical changes of things, okay? That short period may seem like a longer period, but it's really not that long. 60 years, okay? It's a lifespan. Not even a lifespan for most of you. The way things have fallen apart in that short time. The process, the downhill slope to the end, okay, has been sped up so fast. Every decade, there's more momentum behind it, okay? If you don't believe this is the end of the world, then what are you going to believe? Look around you, okay? Look at everything going on around you. Government's now got some of you locked up in your houses and won't even let you out. Won't let you go to church. Won't let you do anything. How long is it going to take for you to admit that this is end times? Okay? This is the end. you got one last chance to get your stuff together and to get out there Help every person you can. This is a call to arms. For everybody, wherever they at, doesn't matter how old you are, doesn't matter how young you are, you got something. Even if it's just yourself. That you can work on, okay? Whether you're not saved, or whether someone you know is not saved, you can always help somebody, no matter what, until you leave this world. You've got that chance. Don't waste it. For everybody out there who is money hungry, okay? So I'll let. My pastor handle that, and I'll go out and make money and live it up. Yeah, a lot of good that money's going to do you now. They're giving money away now. Okay, the economy's shot. That money ain't going to do you a bit of good. None. Zero. Pretty quickly, you ain't going to be able to buy. You ain't going to have enough money to buy anything. Might as well just give it up. Start focusing on the things that actually matter. Okay? You can't take that money with you. And it ain't gonna do you an awful lot of good either way. Even if you could. Whatever's been holding you back, it's time to let it go. Get out there and do what needs to be done. Okay? 
Some of you are going to be mad after this. Some of you are going to shrug it off. And to those of you who shrug it off, I pray to God that something gets through to you before the end is come. Okay? And for those of you who are mad, it's because you're convicted and you know it's true. So you might as well just get it together. Okay? This is a hard message to hear. I know it is. But you need to hear it. It's important. Your lives and the lives of others depend on it. And that's no joke. So, right now, we're going to wind this up. Okay? I just want to say, keep your eyes on God. Let the Spirit move through you. Okay? Don't be doing anything that the Spirit isn't telling you to do. Because you're wasting your time, everybody else's, if you're working outside of the Spirit. You heard it in Ezekiel. Breathe my spirit into you and you will come alive. No other way. Okay? The only way these dry bones are going to come to life is if we get out there and allow God to breathe his spirit into these people. You've got a narrow time slot. We have all the resources we need, but you got to get out there and you got to do it. Okay? So, keep that in mind. I mean the front of your mind, not the back of your mind. I want to see you out there and I want to see you doing it. For your sake, for everyone else's sake. Okay, this is serious business. Very serious. All right. Now I'd like to give a, uh, a call to anyone out there who has not received Jesus as their Savior. Okay? He's been waiting for you. Arms wide open. Waiting for you to just let him in. been on that road way too long. And you know that it's time to make a change. And you know that there isn't much time to make a change. Okay? All that's around you going on is God's one last attempt to get people's ideas and, and focus turned from the things of the world back onto Him. You've seen everything going on around you. You know in your soul something isn't right. It's time to come to Jesus. Okay? You've been running too long. It's time to come to Jesus. And there's those of you out there who came to Jesus and then ran away with the tail between their legs for one reason or another. Okay? And you've been hearing that call in your mind lately in your heart you know it's time to come back you know you've got a job to do and it's time I want to give a prayer for those who want to dedicate their lives so Take a moment now and pray with you guys. Lord, I just pray for these people who are unsaved or want to rededicate their lives, Lord. And I just pray right now that they would take a moment and that they would confess to you their unbelief and confess to you that you are Lord of Lords. 
met that speak it and pray for you to come into their life Lord it's not a complicated process it's simple it only takes a few minutes important thing is whatever they say Lord let them mean it in their heart we know that our time is short God we pray right now that you would bring up people to serve you and you would take those who serve you Lord and raise them up in a community a powerful community God they can get out there and they can witness to people they can draw people into you Lord we realize and we recognize that our time is short we pray that you would help us to use every last minute of it for your glory we would get out there in our communities in our schools all the places we are and I pray that we would like never before start bringing people to you give us a boldness to get out there and do what has to be done Lord lead us, guide us, saturate us in your spirit Lord we don't want to sprinkling, we don't want to dusting, we want to be submerged in your spirit. You told us, Lord, that with your spirit we had authority over all things. We pray right now that you would help us in this time, Lord, to use that authority we were given to drive out the demonic powers over these people Lord and to be able to draw them to you and be the light God just give us that boldness because our time is short and it's time to hire us Lord so we just pray that you would be with each one of us in the coming months and years and however long this lasts Lord that you would help us to be true soldiers for you in this time. Keep us safe and bring the last of the people to you, Lord, at whatever cost. And we are ready to serve you through whatever happens, Lord. Just give us the faith, the outpouring of the faith and Spirit to get us through these rough times. In your name we pray. Amen. Thank you all. And I just pray that you will uh, take this serious. Okay? Because it's very serious. And I hope you all stay safe.